Good morning and thank you, uh, Dr. Mahipal, sir, for such a kind introduction. I'm not sure if I'm fitting into that mode. But yes, uh, refractive surgery has been a you know, sea change procedure for uh, making the life going beyond what we think or what we see. In that, and laser refractive surgery has been there for such a long time and it still continues to be the one of the best surgery in human body. I think we covered the LASIK PRK in the previous session, now we're taking through the lenticule-based surgeries. My job is to take you through how it evolved and what are the basics in uh, lenticule-based surgeries, which I'm going to take you through. No financial disclosure from my side. We all understand the journey of uh, lenticule-based skeletal uh, refractive lenticule extraction began with a smile procedure and it was in 2016 when this was approved by FDA and since then it has become one of the most uh, important surgery laser refractive surgery in cornea per se and many many people have shifted to this particular procedure so why this transition from flap to cap? You just heard the talks on our uh, topo treatments and various other ways to do a LASIK procedure. But yes, definitely there has to be something why we are shifted. And these are three important aspects which has made things much more important or towards the you know, lenticular based surgery. The last one is the best uh, priority wise, I would say. It doesn't in induce higher order of vision that much and gives a good quality of vision. I think whatever we do, we are looking for good quality of vision. Apart from that, most of the refractive procedures do have ocular surface problems. And that is where the smile is or our lenticle based surgeries are better than a flap based surgeries or PRK in that way because of lesser damage to ocular surface, lesser induction of dry eye, and actually having a better biomechanical strength of the corneal tissue. I think these are important areas which makes this surgery more adaptable to your patients. So this is one of our patients. If you see the uh, representation of a confocal microscopy done after smile and femtosecond LASIK, you see the sub-basal nerve fiber regeneration happens very fast with the uh, smile procedure, which is quite less. If you see, this is the one month, this is six month. This uh, LASIK procedure, that nerve regeneration is still to be there in these cases, which signifies a better ocular surface of our patient undergoing lenticule-based procedures and better outcome. Come because whatever post op problem we face is mainly directed towards a poor ocular surface in these patients, also. The second important thing which highlights was the biomechanical stability. Definitely, superiority is there with the smile procedure because there's a localized collagen liability transition which is happening with the calf side kept only, and that preserves the majority of a strong anterior peripheral collagen lamellies, which uh, Dr. Rohit had nicely you know, depicted and done a lot of studies on these also. Other important area will be a pupil size. I think that if you have a larger pupil size, the lenticule-based procedure may be a better option for these patients, especially with the larger mesopic pupil in our patients. The transition does happen in any surgical procedure. When it started, we used to say, okay, this is the four or five guidelines to get into a lenticule-based surgeries, right from the observation of uh, somebody who experienced surgery to do a wet lab, then understanding the machine and laser parameter, which is uh, the most important part for any any procedure, then shift to a flex, then pseudo smile, then go to smile. This transition has uh, gone away now. We have so many for, uh, for formats are there where we have changed this entire procedure in, in a better way also. I think most important thing is understanding your machine. Whichever machine you have, you must understand the various parts, the profile of those systems, how they uh, give you a better outcome in these patients, selection of proper patient, then selection the various disposable items for these cases also. I think laser settings are, you know, the most important part for uh, any, you know, femtosecond applications. If you look into this smile 500 kilohertz system, two things are very important. One is the spot spacing and the track spacing. These are two areas where you can change your, you know, uh, profile and get to a better outcome in these patients also. These are various ranges of uh, things which are there, pulse energy to energy offset, track distance, 
spot distance, they can all be modified in the you know uh, laser settings which can be modified in a expert mode only in a small uh, machine. But if you look into this important profile, based on this, many uh, the ablation profile has changed in recent time. So if you decrease the spot distance and track distance, definitely you're going to put more energy, but you're going to have more smoother cuts. Similarly, if you increase the distance and track distance, spot distance, we are decreasing the energy, but there are chances of more additions are there. So you have to balance both the distance of a spot and track in these cases. Similarly, decreasing the pulse energy, Definitely it will cause less damage to the corneal tissue, but there will be a faster recovery because the energy was less. Similarly, if you increase the pulse energy, you have a, a more energy delivered to the cornea, you may have a smoother cut, but there, there will be a more OVL formation, may have a delayed rehabilitation in these patients also. The surgical techniques have become simpler now. We all understand how to do these surgery appropriately and understand how it has to be dissected out. This is a laser application to creating the lenticule first side cut, then the cap, uh, which has been uh, done here, then you'll have a side cut happen. I think this laser procedure has become also simplified, but challenge would have been for beginners to how to dissect appropriately the anterior pocket and the posterior pocket, which is sometimes feel it may be difficult, because to understand your lenticule thickness is just few microns, and to have this posterior opening sometimes can be difficult here. So this is what a uh, little bit of frill have seen here that indicates you have disrupted the uh, posterior edge of a lenticule here. Anterior dissection is simpler, then you can complete the posterior dissection, and entire lenticule can be taken out simply by you know manipulation with a spatula only. Nowadays, you hardly need to use uh, your forceps to take out this lenticle which is inside with a smooth dissection, smooth application laser, things become very, very simple nowadays. So these are various difficulties you might face you know, whenever you're doing a, a lenticule-based procedures, but with experience, they go down very, very fast. And if you understand how to actually know where exactly you are, anterior or posterior, it is the posterior less uh, dissection which is more important, and that can be known by uh, basically creating the little bit of a frill. This tells you you are posteriorly, and the stop sign, which also tells you you are in a proper pocket. If you understand these two uh, areas of dissection, your things can be very, very simple. I think Dr. Rupal is not here. I'll cover a little about this technique also. So sometimes now, nowadays we directly go to posterior dissection also because that also sometimes simplifies your dissection procedure. Here I'm posteriorly, I'm dissecting the entire uh, area. You know that I have already have a frill here that tells you I have disrupted the you know posterior plate. Just take the flap little anteriorly, then you go anterior to the dissection and it becomes very simplified dissection. So both ways can be done. If you can't see this ledge, you can do a reverse sensory hook uh, procedure to depict this uh, ledge in those cases also. These are our immediate post-op pictures, immediate post-op OCT tells you that the cornea behaves so nicely within a few days, you see a very, very nice application. One of the dreaded complication is suction loss in these cases. The incidence is very, very less nowadays. If I see my own cases, last 1,000, no uh, suction loss happening, despite using the 500 kilohertz system also. Management profile for suction loss is very nicely described, and the machine tells you what is to be done in these cases also. I can take a little more time because Rupal is not there. Then you have a, a various retreatment enhancement systems are now available with the uh, SMILE procedure because that's been there for last almost now two decades and people have come out with various ways to do it. You can do a, a circle pattern, you can do a subcap lenticular extraction, PRK, you can do a circle pattern or a thin flap plastic can also be done in these cases also. So you have a nice algorithm to be done for these patients where actually you can make you know that cap to flap with this uh, circle D pattern here. This is ablation done subsequently you can lift the flap and do ablation in these cases also so this simplifies your uh, post uh, regression which you know uh, Himasu talked about can be managed in these patients also 
this is what is going to be covered subsequently in, uh, in our talks by various other speakers, the newer uh, KLX platforms. In that, uh, Visumax 500 now sh has shifted to a Smile Pro Visumax 800, where your lenticle dissection has come down from 28 seconds to 10 seconds, hardly any chance of suction loss. Then you have a very nice uh, aqua line which gives a cyclotorsion alignment. Also, center line which gives a very nice pupil center and better centration happening in these cases also. These are other three plat platforms which are available now in India also. You have a clear from GEMA, silk from j, &J and you have a smart side swine uh, thing which is ATOS. They are all available. This is a study which is uh, published by Dr. Jodhvid Mehta where we compared the available other models. They are almost similar. But if you look into a clear which has access to IOCD Microsoft, sometimes you can see which is there in a JNJ platform also. Otherwise, cyclotrosh and compensation has come in almost every platform which is needed for nowadays also. And this is what uh, Silk procedure will come, launched in 2023, which is basically a low, uh, ultra low energy delivery system by convex lenticular design, which might induce lesser dry eye. And more importantly, it has a bridgeless spot separation, which gives a rapid visual recovery also. I gave you the beginning of a lenticle based procedure, which was Smile, which was shifted to a 500 to 800 now. Then you have various other platforms which is giving you access to you to give it to patient the better outcome in these cases also. There are a few challenges still left. One is hyperopic corrections. Second, a retreatment uh, to be thought about in these procedures also. I'm pretty sure the future is towards a lenticular based procedures. Thank you for your kind listening. I appreciate your listening. Any questions for uh, Professor Titian? So one thing you got out very nicely is that uh, the terminologies of lenticule-based procedures is going to change. For all this while, we had one technologies and uh, it became synonymous with uh, lenticule extractions. Now it's going to be called the KLX or maybe something else. Thank you, sir. <laughs>